I have been talking about leadership and leading from love and what that means and how to actually connect to people's hearts so that you're leading them in a space rather than just giving them knowledge and information, you're leading from a space of connection to their hearts and actually impacting them. You know, I think about often in my life, the people who have affected me deeply at a core level, it's been people who I've known have cared for me. It's been people who I've known have had a ton of kindness towards me. It hasn't been through a bunch of information, right? Like sitting in a classroom, gaining all kinds of knowledge and all kinds of input. No, it's come from people who have actually taken the time to express their care and their compassion for me. And so we talked about that the first week, leading from love. Second week, we talked about um, empathy and the value of empathy. And so today, I wanted to share Romans 2, verse 4. And it says, or do you presume on the riches of his kindness and forbearance and patience, not knowing that God's kindness is meant to lead you to repentance? So when we understand God's kindness and his heart and his character towards us, it calls us to repentance. Because kindness, when fully understood, love moves us to a place of repentance. And I'm not talking about just like, Oh, I sinned, I'm sorry. I'm talking about that mind shift where we understand what can really happen when we follow the ways of somebody who is actually caring for us. Uh, Paul, when he writes that, he's writing, he uses the word, the term hesed, it's H-E-S-E-D, and it basically is talking about, the, uh, there's actually um, arguments about should that word be defined as love or should that word be defined as grace? And so... Here it is written to us as kindness. It's the kindness of God that leads us to repentance. And kindness in that sense includes grace, mercy, love. All of it together is what draws us to repentance. So you think about Paul saying, it's God's kindness that led me to a new change of mind, to a new understanding of his heart for me. And then we looked at, we talked about last time about Jesus weeping when Lazarus died. We see his heart, his compassion. And another one that I personally love is the woman caught in adultery because you think about the humiliation and the shame and embarrassment and fear of being stoned, the incredible amount of emotions this woman is feeling. And Jesus says, go and sin no more. Like to me, that kind of kindness, we don't see that. Like in the church body, we see leaders saying, do this or do this and get this or get this. Like, you better do this or you're going to go to hell. You better do this or you're going to get whatever kind of persecution, punishment. And yes, I'm not opposed to saying there is hell. That is going to happen to some people at some time. There is punishment that happens, but that is not God doing it to them. So I think as leaders, we have to be so careful, so cautious that we are walking in kindness and not walking in black and white and judgment. And I'm not saying right and wrong or, or better terms in my opinion are um, life and death. Like I want to walk in ways of life, but I want to lead others into paths of life. And if I'm so busy making judgments and critical, harsh determinations of people and towards people, I'm missing the kindness that God himself carries. And I think it's vital that we understand that it is kindness that leads us to repentance. And the people that you're ministering and giving to, it is kindness that leads them to a change of mind, to understanding something different, and actually being able to step into something better. So that is my encouragement for you, learning how to walk in kindness, grace, mercy, and love, along with an understanding that also truth matters. So how can you love with kindness and honesty? Those are skills every leader should have, but not every leader does. And those are the skills I would challenge you, learn how to do both honesty and compassion with your people.